welcome to my channel. This is Fee, and I am working on uh, the leopard that I got from. Oh, actually, well, it's, a, it's a, my custom picture that Nathan took. It's a custom picture, picture that Nathan took. Um, it's one that I. This is the prize that I got. I've, I think I've mentioned this a few times. So, this is a leopard. Uh, this is where I'm at so far. Um, this one has was special to us before. It's more special to us now. Um, so this is I will talk about our trip to South Africa doing this one. I will zoom you in. Let's get you zoomed in. That's probably too zoomed in. Hang on. Get you there. There we go. Probably a bit better. Um, so yeah, this is our trip to South Africa. Which Nathan's sister won. So that's the sister that has just just passed. So yeah, it's still it's a bit raw. And, but... Uh, Took this to Sydney with me and we was working on it and so family members got to see the photo that um, we were you know at least one of the photos that we were able to take from uh, the trip with uh, Sula for, for Sula so I have hang on I've just misplaced something here we go there we go that's better I um when I, when Nathan and I got this trip, Sula, well, Sula couldn't make it because of her heart. Um, she couldn't, she can't go very, couldn't go very far from anywhere uh, with the way things were. So we were given the opportunity to go, which um, we gratefully accepted. Oh yeah, but because she could couldn't join us, um, and I didn't want to put a heap of pictures and stuff on Facebook. And hang on, I will move you down. Sorry if I make you queasy here. Um, yeah, because to so that she could come along for the journey. Uh, at the time, I was studying. And had learnt, had discovered uh, this website that I use uh, to create and keep it up to date while we were away. And all I had to do was post each day's link into Facebook um, to share it nice and easy. Um, but Sula also had obviously had the web page so this web page was built my website was built um, so that Sula could be with us on the trip to South Africa uh, and I have extended it out and included uh, the trip I did before that which was Norway and Iceland and then um, my latest trip which was to Egypt so um, I'm actually going to do a, uh, as you can see, a drill with me and I will uh, talk about that trip. And sorry if I pause, it's just, yeah, well, I mean, it's a, a little bit, a little bit raw, a little bit raw now. Um, so with the trip, I will put the link to the link to the to my web page there. Uh, with the trip, it was really funny, Nathan. I was at I was at home. It was a weekend, and Nathan's rung me up from work, and he's gone. Sula's won a trip to South Africa. I want to go, and she's given us the tickets. Um, and it was just the way he's. Way, way he said it. I've always wanted to go, and yeah, it was rather. He, he was, he was really excited about it. 
Um, so yeah, we we um, had a look, checked. Up, you know, the conversations with Sula were, you know, it's not not a scam. It was a trip that was won via Manly Sea Eagles, which is a rugby team in uh, New South Wales, which is um, state. It's in Australia. And uh, it was because uh, if you brought membership to the footy to this club by a certain date, um, you went into the draw and uh, yeah, she won it, couldn't go. So she'd actually offered it to other members of her family in Sydney um, and none of them could go. So we got it. Uh, all we had to do was because the trip was for somebody else we didn't have to do a name change because the tickets hadn't been purchased but because the prize winner wasn't using the trip we had to pay airport taxes so i think that was about a thousand bucks we paid um thousand dollars for a trip that's about ten thousand dollars yeah i think that's a pretty good good price to, good thing to pay you could make that sacrifice for a trip like that. Okay. So, yeah, Nathan rung me up and I was all excited and it's like, yep, we're going. And we had to set date. So he was told in, we found out in February. And we settled on September because we were looking at weather. Um, like weather conditions and all of that. Making sure everything was right time of year to go and also right time of year to go work wise as well holy cow dog go to bed sit down somewhere just stop walking oh pardon me sorry i've come off night shift i'm not ready to go to bed yet so this is why i'm time and painting and yeah, so February, it was out. we're going to go on holidays. This is where we're going to go. This is the trip. And we did a lot of looking at the website. Um, it was the South African Safari Co. If you uh, click on the link. Um, oh, no, I don't have it there. The link's not there. Um, yeah, the South African Safari Co. is actually an Australian company based over in Sydney. And yeah, we obviously went looking through their website or all things and looked at what we were doing. And oh, sorry, we've got a thunderstorm happening out there. And um, you know, started doing our research for what we needed to do for the trip. So looking at other stuff to do while we were over there, one of the things was uh, shark cage diving. Uh, in a in my earlier years, I was married to a professional fisherman and worked on shark boats, and I actually used to go out to see on the shark boats fishing and um, we were catching them with nets not not on fishing rods and they were only a small base they were small the sharks we weren't chasing after the big ones like the white pointers and that oh buddy sit down there we go he's on his bed now um so that was one of the things was shark cage diving so started discussing that with him in March um, semi collared his mate um, I turned around and said oh, I'd like to do this and because Nathan was like no nah, not doing it not doing it so dangerous not doing it so I managed to talk to his mate and say this is what I want to do but he's just not not eager to do it he doesn't want to do it and within five minutes of me that saying that 
he was straight away saying to Nathan, you need to do this. This is, you won't get an opportunity like it again. So um, it took from March uh, to, I think, about July, August to convince him. And he, Nathan was managing a fishing tackle store at the time. And he'd said it to a couple of people about going to South Africa and might do the shark cage diving. And uh, he had a lot of South African clients that used to go in there. And they were all telling him, do it, do it, do it. So in... July, August, I'm not quite sure what month, he actually said, okay, I'll do it. And in less than five minutes of him, <laughs> and I was really quick, in less than five minutes of him saying, yeah, he'll do it, I went and booked and paid for um, us doing it. Uh, okay, so... And then I turned around and said, it's all booked and paid for. You can't change your mind now. So that's one of the things we did with planning and looking at where else to go. Excuse me. Now, what else was we doing beforehand? Well, we had to do... Um, travel shots. <laughs> Me, it's easy to, for me to go and get flu shots, uh, not flu shots, but immunisation shots for travel um, was quite easy because travel doctors are right throughout the city. Um, and I already had a travel doctor that I used from the last time I went away. So went in there, uh, selected, well, discussed where we were going. Uh, so we ended up with... Uh, anti-malaria tablets I had a uh, yellow fever injection done Nathan didn't um, hepatitis tetanus you know a few other things done so that was all covered then um, basically it was just waiting um, just an eagerness to wait and yeah we Oh, sorry, I keep yawning. Okay, so yeah, there was the waiting to go was just it just seemed forever. Sorry, just having a sip of coffee. Yeah, so waiting seemed to take forever because whenever I've gone on holidays overseas, it's been I want to go on holidays. Where can I go? Book it and go. I'm very fortunate in that way. I will... T uh, what I tend to do, though, is I do actually let my family know. I do get there and go, well, I'm looking at booking a trip on these dates. This is where I plan to go. Um, and that's just me letting know that I'm planning it and they know that when I'm planning it, it's <laughs> it's going to happen. Um, so yeah, we were, we had months of looking and looking and looking at this website, the African Safari Co website, and then looking at what else was in the area, looking at the accommodation. Um, I suppose for me, I did a lot of that. I don't know how much Nathan did, but I did a lot of that because I like to plan and know where I'm going. It's a part of me of... If I know where I'm going, I look at the safety aspect and I'm safe. So yeah, day came for us to go. Uh, Nathan's mate picked us up from the airport, from home, and he drove us to the airport. Got on a plane at, oh, oh what time was it? Probably 11 o'clock at night. So... Uh, just trying to work out. Uh, yeah, about twenty to twenty to twenty minutes to midnight, um, and an eleven-hour flight. 
uh, flight across shit flight South African Airways it was a bit cramped um, uh, Nathan and I both struggled to sleep um, but that being said you know we got there finally we got there our entry into the country going through is it customs or anyway the ha getting into into um south africa was really funny because we've walked in and there's all these people going all different directions and you know we've asked someone we've asked actually a guard that's in the area or he looked like a guard he said which we you know, asked him which which line we go to and he pointed this line so we went there it was a short line it was really funny it was a short line and then we get to the counter and they said around and said, oh no, this is, you, you should be on this line, that line over there, which had about 70% of the passengers were on that line. So yeah, we should have known, should have realised. Um, so, but they turned around and said, well, look, go there and we'll get you through. So we actually did end up skipping the line. Um, but it was, we had to, before they looked at our passports, uh, they we were put in front of a scanner because Ebola was um, very, there was an, a big outbreak of uh, Ebola that happened around about the same time. So you were scanned or thermal to check to see if you were ill or anything like that. Um, if you were, you weren't getting into the country, obviously. Okay, so we got in, uh, we had, we were met by a guy with the, our names on the, on a piece of paper and we sat in the vehicle and waited because there was another gentleman on exactly the same flight as us and he got lost. <laughs> so we didn't know he was on the same flight as us, but yeah, he got, he got, apparently he, he got lost and they had to locate him. And so we, it was just a little mini bus and we were taken to where we were staying. So our first, we were staying at the Protea Hotel in OR Tambo, which is actually right at the airport. You could see the airport from our room. Uh, there wasn't much airport noise though. Oh, it was it was actually pretty good. It was a really nice room. Like the room. Here comes another yawn. Ooh, pardon me. There we go again. Um. So we got back. We got taken to our rooms, checked in. Safe wasn't working, so we've rung down to the desk and yeah, said the safe's not working. That was guy came in looked at it and then just took the whole safe away and then bolted in a brand new safe uh, and then Nathan's like no it was before while we were while we we're doing the planning stages just remember that while we we're doing the planning stages um, I was looking at the hop on hop off buses that tour around Johannesburg because uh, that was our oh, that was our first that was our location for the start of the tour, and you know when I said go, oh, we'll do the hop on hop off bus uh, when we get there, you know just to go and have a look because it's probably the, our only chance to have a look at jo Joburg. Uh, Nathan at the time was like, oh no, we'll get back from we'll we'll fly in and we'll be tired, so we'll go and have a sleep. And I turned around and said, okay, well. This is a suggestion of what we can do. Righty well. When we actually got to the room, we showered and freshened up and we were wide awake. Absolutely wide awake. Um, so Nathan agreed we would go into Johannesburg itself and uh, do the tour with a hop on hop off bus. We were picked up, um, 
So we went downstairs and we asked how do we get to the train station because there's a train that takes you all the way in because uh, it's a you know, reasonable distance from OR Tambo to Johannesburg and we were you know we said oh well we want to catch a taxi so we can go to the train station to go into the city and uh, the gentleman at the door turned around and said no you don't get in taxi we'll take you and when you come back you will ring this number and we will pick you up so there was no um, no misconception about safety <laughs> um, it was actually you know there was no choice of leaving the grounds without um, somebody escorting us so we had this guy come pull up in the car his name was Wellington so because well his English name was Wellington I can't remember what he said his first name his real name was uh, but in South Africa it tends to be you, you get given English names you've got your birth names but somewhere along the line um, you get given English names given names that uh, can be a pro can be pronounced by um, the white people is probably the best way to put it and he was really good he was really good um, so you re read the website and you'll see the little story on that uh, so he drove us to the train station and when we actually got in the vehicle to go to the train station the we realized that the hotel where we were staying at was completely fenced off and there were security guards around the place so that was yet again another sign of how uh, how safety is yeah, you're not really that safe in South Africa. You have to be so cautious because you have people that are opportunist. So what they do is, yeah, they put up a lot of fences around the place and to try and reduce the opportunities. Um, so yeah, we're taken to the train station. We got on the train, went into Johannesburg pretty fast train it's really cool and uh, we located the hop on hop off bus brought tickets and we got on uh, it was there was a Sunday I think it was Sunday was our first day there and we got on the hop on bus and plugged in the ear headphones so we could hear you know the guided tour as you're going along um and we were coming up to our first stop and nathan and i looking around and i've looked at him and gone i don't want to get off here <laughs> <laughs> the bus didn't even stop um and there was quite well just about every stop that we pulled up at or we came to, we were advised that the bus was not stopping for anyone to get off. Because it was a weekend, it was so quiet. Um, the streets were semi-deserted, so safety wasn't safety wasn't high. So uh, yeah, it did. The bus did actually stop at the. Um, Nelson Mandela's museum which was uh, very interesting very interesting indeed um, there was it showed what it was like in the apartheid world and the segregation between the blacks and the whites um, and it showed it was so so noticeable and 
even after doing that you could see the separation the degrees of separation um, afterwards when we were actually um, just doing our tour and another yawn oh sorry all right so we did the tour no to nelson mandela's tour around the museum um hopped back on the bus and didn't get off again until we got back to where we got on which is right near the train station and um what's here oh this is bad yawning now i've been sitting down for too long um one of the sections that we drove through was really funny on the head piece here, on the tour that you're listening to the list that you're listening to um it actually turns around and says uh, that this section the section you're passing through if the wind is going the wrong direction um, you will have an odor that is you will be able to smell something that is because to the right of you is the rubbish um, hopefully you are not here on a day where the wind is in the wrong direction because it is a putrid smell or something like that but yeah it just turns around and says i hope you're not here on a day when the wind is going the wrong direction <laughs> and yeah the rubbish pile was huge sorry i'm just hearing noises out there um but yeah so we did the did the hop on hop off we got off we didn't really hop off much but we at the end we got off and i'm working there with my travel bag which is um it's an enforced strap so cutting through is a very hard to cut through the strap and the bag is across my body with my hand over my bag uh, the hand is actually over top of the zip uh, and when you travel solo you learn how to travel safely and how to prevent theft but Nathan was noticing all the people that he, he turned around and he said they're looking at your bag they're looking to see if they can get to it so this is just people out in the streets um, I will say it it wasn't just blacks it was just the people on the streets looking uh, so Nathan was very very paranoid and it was from that point on that he was um, I suppose it was from there he realized how unsafe it could be and uh, wherever he wanted went he wanted me to go which in a way isn't too bad but it is in a way because he's a smoker so if he decides that he wanted to go somewhere to, for a smoke he insisted that i come with him <laughs> yet i would have been safer inside than out there with him yeah um so yeah we nathan got a lovely surprise uh went and brought smokes and it was like a dollar 20 for a packet of 25 cigarettes so he was <laughs> really impressed and um that's where we also noticed the price of food was really good you know it was very low cost uh, to a lot of uh, a lot of things like that and then uh went on to the train and went back to our hotel however when we got to the train station where we were being picked up because we you know we got back to the train station we rung up to be picked up so we're waiting and while we're waiting i noticed a, a sign that was out the front and it is on the website but the best part about it is that before exiting because the, the part that you have to actually go in through secure parking 
and it actually states, before exiting the boom gate, please expect the following actions. The driver will be required to switch off the engine. The driver will be required to remove the key from the ignition and display it to, to, to security. The driver will be required to restart the vehicle and exit through the boom gate. And I was looking at it, trying to work it out, and then the penny dropped. What it is, is um, if you steal a vehicle and take it, if you get in a vehicle there and take it out, and you've actually stolen it, you won't have keys and you won't be able to stop and start it with keys. So that is a way of ensuring that a that you ca the cars aren't stolen from this car park which is pretty good i don't know if it's anywhere else but that's the first time i've seen it um, but yeah i really like that sign so i put a photo of it and um, put it on the web page so we've gone back to the hotel where we're staying and gone okay we'll have a bit of a sleep um, because at six o'clock that night we were meeting up with everybody else on the tour and our guide so we, we get a rundown on what we're doing so we went and had a snooze woken up and gone and had dinner dinner was no we didn't have dinner we went down to meet everybody and yeah we went down and met everybody um, and we were given what's called what was a pro card which was a card for the chain of hotels we were staying at if you showed your card you got 50% uh, off your meal and so you know after we'd met everybody um, we turned around and went and had dinner and it ended up being in Australian dollars we paid six dollars each for this massive steak dinners and it was beautiful so very surprised at the uh, price of um, food uh, so yeah from there it was um, sat around for a bit um, we didn't actually get spend any time with our people we're going on the tour with um, but yeah we had dinner and relaxed went back to our rooms and got a good night's sleep um, and uh, when we actually had that meeting up with the guy with the with everybody he did turn around and say that um, every what they'll do is our bags are to be at the outside our door at a certain time and they'll be picked up and taken downstairs put on the bus so that was so when we got up in the morning we packed our bags kept our toothbrushes out and what we we're carrying on the bus and then went down to have breakfast and once we had breakfast we went back up brushed our teeth and then we went off outside waiting for the bus to uh, to get on and to depart and start our tour that was our routine every morning was suitcases out go and have dinner go and have breakfast and then go brush our teeth um, for the start of the tour ready for the tour to begin uh, ready to get on the bus or wherever we were going quite an easy routine to get into um, because yeah brushing your teeth going eating dinner eating breakfast and that uh, I prefer to brush your teeth after eating breakfast it's just nice and makes it fresh for the day all right so we've piled onto the bus um i think uh, our tour guide was craig and Yeah, our tour guide was Craig. Uh, I think it was Moses was our driver. So our tour guide was actually uh, a white South African. Um, and Moses was um, black South African. 
um, and I, that's the only way to explain it because when you hear some of the names that people are given it's like it's definitely not your native um, name your birth name but yeah uh, so yeah we um, all pulled on the bus and drove to a hazy view um, through on the way through to hazy view though had a couple of stops um, we uh, where did we go we ended up at the Blyde River, River Canyon um, where else did we go uh, one of the stops before we even got even to doing all the tour stuff uh, we stopped at a coffee shop and it was actually named Figo and I chuckled and went well that's appropriate because there's a big coffee drinker back then and it's like what do you mean it's like well, Figo Figo for coffee <laughs> Uh, and then I was out the, off the bus quicker than anybody else heading to get a cup of coffee. Um, purchased a couple of scarves there. One of them was for Nathan's mum. Uh, one for myself. And I think that's where we purchased for Sula as well. We, yeah, from there we drove along quite a few different places just basically driving through towns and uh, yeah it was quite a cool drive we stopped somewhere and had fish for lunch um, and we went to yeah the Blyde with the Cat River Canyon the three rondevilles um, and the and I don't know how many of you have watched it um, back when I was a kid there was a movie that came out that uh, the gods must be crazy um, at on the, that movie they take this bottle coke bottle to the ends of the earth they throw it off the end of the earth well that's actually where we went to um, it is that place is actually called God's window and it, that's where it is yeah there's photo taken we took photos at, at God's window where they threw the coke bottle over the edge at the end of, end of the world on the God's must be crazy so we've gone from uh, so that was our last stop was the that God's window and we went to hazy view and we stayed at oh what was it called hippo what was it called hippo hollow it was called and yeah that was that was really funny um, we <laughs> went to put our passports and that in the safe and yet again <laughs> safe was broken so two nights two bro two two different places two broken safe so they've had to come in and fix that one up um, which is quite amusing to you know go to a place and their safes are broken it's like oh you know but now what? So Hippo's Hippo Hollow was um, quite a nice place. Um, two single beds, which is quite amusing. Um, we had to push those beds together. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, well cool but it was frustrating just the amount of times we were put in rooms with single beds was really really frustrating but it was just about a joke at one point um, so yeah we wandered around uh, 
if I hollow for a bit, had a look around, um, ended up going down for dinner, and it was just absolutely gorgeous. You just got this um, dining area and an outside dining area, and then you've got this lawned area, and then you've got the river, Hazy View River, going past it. Uh, there's signs up saying uh, beware of crocodiles and hippos and it's like oh yeah okay you know just signs warning signs um, not really you can actually at night time the hippos come out and you can see them <laughs> uh, they actually have guards um, no we're not really guards but they've got guys at the on the lawned area at the steps and they're constantly watching for where the hippos are because hippos um, they're one of the dangerous most dangerous animals on the planet it's because um, they're very territorial so if they believe that you're in their territory and they come running for you they will crush you so they have guys down there at the steps on the grass watching these hippos um, to make sure that uh, if they start coming towards the area, they make sure that we're all out the way. And uh, it's also for our safety, they stop us from going down and they'll turn around and say there's a hippo right there. Um, not going down that, that direction, you can go the other direction. Um, so yeah, we had a really nice dinner and Nathan learnt about tipping because in Australia you don't tip and he loved it loved it he had ostrich and he absolutely loved it um, and he also our waitress was absolutely brilliant um, both him and her were just laughing and carrying on it was just it was brilliant she was really nice um, and Nathan tipped her and she was quite surprised at the tip. Um, first thought was, oh no, we haven't picked, tipped enough. And we actually asked Craig, our guide, and he turned around and said, no, that's a really good tip, what you gave her. And Nathan's like going, good, good, good. Yeah, because she, she was really good. Um, so we'd done her dinner, and then it was an early start in the morning. So we just went back to our room and relaxed and went to sleep and woke up bright and early in the morning. So I'm actually going to uh, stop here. I'm going to stop the whip and chat anyway. I'll probably keep drilling for a little bit longer before I go to bed. Um, because the start of that morning, which is the 22nd of September was that morning, that was our first day on safari where we actually went into the national park and drove around and saw animals, African animals in the wild and saw nearly all of the big five. Um, so yeah. Uh, that will be on my next whip and chat drill with me when I so the next time this leopard comes up and I will zoom you out now there we go um, bear with me sorry let's see if so you can see him not that you can see him while I've got stuff on his face um, so yeah, the next, stay tuned for the next exciting episode of my whip and chat and I will talk about going through the Kruger National Park and it is in the Kruger National Park that we took this photo. So just so you're aware that this is where this photo was taken. Um, so yeah, if you my next whip and chat, if it has the leopard on it, it will be the next exciting episode. And I will talk to you at 
some other stage and um, hopefully you're having a great day. I'll talk to you later. Bye.